Hi everyone, uh, my name is Elias Jashan. I'm the editor of This Arabic Queer and I hope you get to enjoy the book. When I was editor at Star Observer back in Australia more than six years ago, um, which is Star Observer's Australia's queer media outlet, um, that was when I started to become exposed to news and stories coming out of the Middle East and North Africa regarding the queer community. Um, notably, um, uh, when ISIS uh, had their reign of terror across Syria and Iraq, and they were throwing gay men off the rooftop. Um, and that really affected me because I was like, mm -hmm. well, even though my family's not Syrian, my family's not Iraqi, um, it just felt like I had that connection with the queer community there through the cultural connection. And, um, and I felt really helpless being the editor of, of, of a queer media outlet in, in Australia, on the other side of the world, having limited resources and not being able to, not, be, not being able to tell their stories, not being able to, not be able to tell this particular story with the nuance that it deserves. The, idea, the way these stories were uh, reported was through so much sensationalism and just so much um, underlying and sometimes blatant Islamophobia and racism around it. Um, and I'm not saying these stories should not have been reported. They do need mm -hmm. to be reported on. But it's just the way that it's the way that it becomes sensationalized and becomes this focal thing, and then everything else about the community is forgotten. Few other stories as well. Like there was another story that came out of Egypt about when um, the regime the stormed a, a cinema that was purportedly a gay men sex on premises venue, and then they just outed all these men on TV. And it just I just felt like the way seeing the discourse in the media, seeing the discourse on social media about all these events coming out of the Middle East, just felt like we were speak, we were being spoken over or being spoken for, rather than the community given being given a platform. Um, to speak for themselves, that we felt, felt like we had no agency whatsoever. For example, in 2020, the EU embassy, the Canadian embassy, and the British embassy in Baghdad just started to raise the rainbow flag in solidarity with the queer community in Iraq. While their intentions are great, they did not liaise with the queer community in Iraq before they did that. And because of that, they provoked a lot of uh, homophobia throughout the country and some, 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 at some point got quite violent. So that was like a just reeked of white sa white savior complex and it just didn't and while they thought they were helping the community, it turned out to be detrimental to the community. While I was editor of Star Observer, every time I got involved attended community events or did things on behalf of Star Observer, people people never really saw me in my full as a person who's also Palestinian and Lebanese. That just they, I don't think a lot of people could reconcile with the fact that I was gay and Palestinian, gay and Lebanese, mm -hmm. um, that I could be both quite comfortable with. Um, because people have these narratives that, you know, that, is, in fact, we can't possibly be gay in that community, that we're, we're, we're you know, we're oppressed and we, we, need, we need people to save us all the time, which is absolutely yes, yeah, because we can look after ourselves, we can be who we are. I'm not saying that it's easy. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of nuance and discussion around that. Uh, uh, that's probably for a discussion for another time. And I have to acknowledge this. In the Arab community, there's a lot of homophobia. So in, in the Arab community, they, they, they're proud of me whenever I'm being openly Palestinian or proud of me being openly Lebanese and talking about the issues in our community. But when it comes to queer issues, they'd rather I don't talk about that at all or they uh, outright like homophobia. One of our contributors mentions in, uh, in the book, uh, Hassan, this concept of living in hyphen. So it's just, I'm, I'm always constantly becoming like, like a camouflage going from one identity to another. And then and it got to a point where um, I was like, you know, F that, I'm going to be both. And if people don't like it, that's their problem. And it's really important to highlight that. One of the other things that I found in mainstream community, in the mainstream media, is that every time uh, there's a, an article published, uh, a, a comment piece or an opinion piece or an essay published from a queer ad writer, I always get the sense that these writers were told to write a specific story to for their for this audience. And so when I approached these writers, I said, look, I don't expect you to perform your queer Arab identity in any way. I don't expect you to pander to a particular narrative. I don't expect you to sort of um, think about the, 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 the white orientalist gaze and expect them to please them or give them what they want. I wanted them to share the story they wanted to. I wanted them to imagine that the microphone was theirs and theirs only and they could write whatever they wanted. Um, and I said, you know, queer, your queer identity, your Arab identity could be indirect or direct in the piece, however they wanted to approach it. So I just felt like, you know, they needed to have that freedom and they needed to have that be away from that sense of urgency of replying to something, talking about something that's 
in response to whatever is in the current discourse. Um, I mean, so, yeah. During the lockdown, I was just, I was reading a lot of books that were slew of all these amazing anthologies. Uh, you know, it's not about the book, uh, Our Women on the Ground, um, The Good Immigrants, both the UK and US editions, and you know, even Saki's had some amazing anthologies, you know, um, The Things I Would Tell You, and also the recent one, We, we Wrote in Symbols. I was like, what, what if, you know, what if I do something like this? I can do nonfiction with what I do is my day job in journalism, and I have editing experience, um, and I've always wanted to publish a book, and it could be a good first step. And um, I was talking to my husband about it, and my husband was like, just sit down and write the proposal and do it. Nothing like this has been done before. Nothing that I know of had been done this before. I mean, there have been some journals, like there's a journal in America called Mizna, and um, it's an Arab American journal, and they put together a, a, an, an issue of queer writers and queer poets and stuff, and it was great. But that's a journal, it's not a book. And there's obviously a, quite a lot of queer Arab fiction as well. Um, I don't need to tell you some of the big names of Slim Haddad, yeah. Rabi Al-Muddin, Abdullah Taya, Randa Jarrah. Like, there's so many out there. I haven't seen anything that's a non-fiction collection of essays, short memoirs, creative non-fiction. I really wanted something that uh, sort of celebrates who we are, um, just shows our community with the nuance and different shades that we that we are. I mean, I, I don't know how to phrase that. This book is a way to, you know, spark Half discussion, obviously, amongst the queer community, amongst the mainstream community, and in the Arab community. Um, I don't want to just preach to the converted, but at the same time, um, just tell people that you know, we do have agency. We can speak for ourselves. We don't need to speak for us all the time. We don't need this white savior complex all the time. There's, I feel like there's a lack of nuance when it comes to the mainstream society talking about us, and also in the Arab community, there's a complete lack of nuance. No, 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 no denying that. So. Yeah, this is our way of saying, you know, like, you know, we're here, we're queer, we're Arab, we can be both, we can, we can celebrate who we are, um, we can, we're comfortable both, but at the same time, we acknowledge the pitfalls of our community, in the Arab community and in the queer community, and, but we found ways to deal with that and still celebrate who we are. Uh, when I started writing this proposal, um, one of my... Um, one of my favourite writers back in Australia, um, Randa Abdel Fattah. I don't know if you've heard of her. Um, her and I know each other. She edited this anthology that I was part of back in Australia called Arab Australian Other. And um, she's sort of become like this mentor of sorts for the Palestinian writing community in Australia. She's, she's amazing. Like, I can't speak any... Can't, I can only praise her. She went through my proposal for, before I sent it out and she suggested that I put a list of names of people to sort of... Um, who could potentially be part of it. So when she said that, I was like, okay. So I opened up my notes app. I started writing names down of all these people that I follow on Twitter and Instagram and people I know off the top of my head who I've met briefly. And I've met, I met Salim Haddad briefly. I met Amru briefly when they were both in London. Um, and I met Muna as well when she came to London briefly. So they were the only three that I had met briefly when I arrived. So everyone else, I'd never met them, but we, 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 we follow each other on Instagram or I'm like, this, I'm like a secret admirer in the background. I started following me back. I'm like, oh, hi, you know. <laughs> um, um, there were some people I approached who are based in the, you know, the uh, Middle East, North Africa, who, and even, everyone I approached, actually, I just said, look, I am, the ones who aren't a published authors at the very least, who aren't published, who aren't, who haven't written about things publicly on the record, um, about them being queer, but I do know they're queer because they may have put something on Twitter on Twitter about it, or we may have they may have de may have, they may have DM'd me about something I've tweeted and say you know actually I'm also part of the community or whatever. I, I told them look, um, your safety is super important, so please if you ever want to write under an alias, you're more than welcome to. And Saki were fully supportive of that as well. Their stories are really crucial and vital because they are part of the community that they, that they just dispels that myth that. There are no, with what I commonly get told from the Arab community, that there are no gay Arabs, we homosexuality did not exist in the Arab community. There's this constant mm -hmm. perception that it's a Western import. But I'm like, well, do you, do you even look at the ancient history of the, the region? Like, look at ancient Egypt, for God's sake. There's so many queer imagery in ancient Egypt. Look at the Phoenicians and the Nabataeans. It just goes back so far. Mm -hmm. Like, and even the, even like the, during the Caliphate, uh, the Caliphate, uh, uh, um, in the Islamic medieval crusades, there's a lot of queer stuff, but it just doesn't get spoken about. It's just straight washed. 
Um, when I asked me this question the other day, do I want to do another volume? And look, I would love to do another volume, but I, I think it's really important that whoever does the next volume, someone else is the editor. And there's no single voice in the community. There's no singular leader of the community. Like, we all have our own different stories and all different perspectives. Like no one, we don't speak on behalf of the whole community in, what, in that way. So whoever edits, the, whoever edits the next volume, I think would offer a different perspective, different lens, different um different way of approaching i think that's really important because this book is coming from my perspective in some ways um because you know i come i grew up in the west i'm a cisgender privileged man so that that um and i hope whoever is the next volume um it comes from it comes from a different background altogether like you know they might be trans they might be non-binary i don't know like, I, I i really think that it's really important who the editor of the next volume comes is a different person in the gay community, I felt like um, people only saw me as gay and Australian, but, and on, I am white passing, I acknowledge that, but once, once I tell them I'm also Palestinian, they just, just, it was always that weird sense of, weird awkward silence in the air that comes out of that, it's like, oh, how can you, how, what? Um, and there's also the, some, sometimes you get the telltale question of, oh, you know, what about Hamas, you know, what, how, how, what, how would, what would it be like if you tried to do a blood parade in Gaza? I'm like, well, What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> um, also, are you, are you saying you, you support a right of return? Because, baby, send me back. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, but uh, okay, you know, the LGBTQ community, um, specifically about, you know, queer Arabs and stuff and bringing bring more together in, like, this non-fiction anthology. And that's when my husband was like, well, just write the proposal and see what you can do. So <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, cool, I'll do that. <laughs> um, 